Hello, I'm Ron, and I'm a former AmeriCorps Habitat for Humanity crew leader. I'm here today to introduce you to Plumbing 101, to give you a general overview of the basics so that you can understand how to prevent problems and how to take care of problems should some arise. Your plumbing system in your home consists of three sets of pipes. The first set is pressurized water that's coming into your home. And it's fed to sinks, showers, tubs, the washing machine, outdoor uh, faucets. The second subset of that is pressurized water that's coming in that goes to your hot water heater first. And then it is distributed to the same sinks, washers, dishwashers, what have you. The third set, which is really a totally different set takes the used and dirty water away from the house through the sewage. The water coming into your house is under significant pressure. So you'll want to make sure you don't have any leaks or that when you're putting stuff in, some new, mater some new materials, whether it be faucets, uh, pipes, or any other plumbing attachments, that you put them in correctly because the water under pressure will definitely find the weakest spot and cause a lot of damage in your home. The easiest way to tell the difference between the clean water coming in your house and the dirty water going out is by looking at the pipes. The pipes that are coming in your house are much smaller. Typically, the sewage leaving your house will be in a six inch pipe, but the water coming into your house will be two inches or smaller, which will then be stepped down to approximately a quarter inch feeds to each fixture that you have. As a homeowner, it is important for you to know how the water enters your home. In most houses, it will enter in through the front as the water main is under the street in front of your house and your feed comes off that water main through the front of your house. It will enter into the house and there will be a valve there. There are two types of valves, a ball valve and a gate valve. The only difference there is one is a lever that flips up perpendicularly to shut off the water flow and the other is just your typical faucet that you turn to the right to tighten it or the left to loosen it. It is then distributed throughout the house to different points and there are multiple shutoff valves at the location of where that water is distributed to. For most uh, repair jobs that you're going to do on your sink or your toilet, you can shut the water off locally. This will just shut the water off supply to that fixture. If you shut off the water to the whole house, everything will not be supplied water in your house. But when you do that, if you're going to ever shut the water off your whole house, you want to get to the lowest spot in your house, which is usually the basement sink, the laundry sink, and after you shut the valve off, open the faucets on the sink down there so that any water remaining in the system after you shut off the feed drains so you only have a bunch of water out around when you loosen up pipes or faucets or other fittings when you're doing the repairs. You'll want to shut the water off to your entire house if you have a leak that you cannot identify such as coming from a ceiling or from behind a wall or if it's before uh, getting to a sink, a dishwasher, a washer or other fixture. You'll need to shut the entire system off so that the leak can be controlled and that you can call a plumber and to search for that leak and repair it. If you're going to do any do-it-yourself projects on your plumbing, some of the basic tools you're going to need are a crescent wrench, channel locks, flathead and Phillips head screwdrivers, and then for reinstalling anything, you're going to need either pipe dope or Teflon tape. Those last two items are what you do to ensure a tight seal between the feeder pipe and the fixture you're putting on so that there are no leaks. If you are thinking about replacing faucets in your home, you're going to need what's called a basin wrench. This will allow you to get behind the sink and up behind it to either remove the old faucet or put in a new one. 
it's pretty tight back there, so you're going to need that special adaptation to unloosen and tighten the bolts. It's always a good idea whenever you do um, work on plumbing is to have a bucket and rags ready so that you can slide the bucket underneath the pipes or fixtures that you're going to remove because there will always be some residual water left in the pipes after you shut off the main valve. Do you have any favorite tools or other ideas that we have not mentioned in this video? If so, again, we welcome you to write about it in the comments section and if possible, send in a photograph as well. In a town like Chicago, it gets really cold in the winter time. And if you don't take the proper precautions to winterize your plumbing system, water in the pipes can freeze. And when water freezes, it expands, causing pipes to burst. Then when they thaw, you have major leaks on your head. Some of the ways to weatherize your pipes and system is to start with the outside faucets. Make sure you remove all hoses. Make sure they are turned off. And the gate valve or the ball valve are tightly closed. Most of the new faucets will say right on top that these are frost-proof faucets. But if you don't have a newer faucet, typically there will be the on-off valve will be on the outside and right on the inside of the house or somewhere in line will be a secondary shutoff that you'll want to turn off during the winter as well. So you just simply remove your hose and make sure the faucet is turned completely off. On days when it is sub-zero, it's a good idea to open your sink valves just a little bit when it's just standing still and it gets that cold, there is a possibility it can freeze. Again, you don't want any water in the pipes to freeze. Expanding ice will damage the pipes. If you keep your ambient house temperature above 40 degrees, uh, the pipes probably won't freeze. The big risk when you do that, if you're gonna have that 40 degrees, is if they're out to an exterior wall. Any pipes against an outside wall should be insulated to prevent cold from being conducted directly from the wall to the pipe, which may lower the temperature enough to cause water in the pipes to freeze. One of the most common problems you'll experience in your plumbing system are clogged drains. Most of these you can handle yourself by using one of the myriad of tools out there. The first are called snakes, and they're either plastic or wire, and you feed these into the drain to hook onto the clog to either pull it out or to push back and forth and allow the running water to push it through the system. The second set of tools are plungers. There are specific plungers for toilets and other applications. The third is to use a compressed air plunger. And this is a more specialized tool where you, where you will form a seal over the drain and build up the air pressure, which is hopefully will be enough to push that clog through generally the P-trap in your system and into the bigger pipes through the sewer system. The last is products that are available are chemicals and there are many, many brand names. One thing they all share in common, they're all hazardous. And despite their saying that they won't harm pipes or the environment, any extremely basic solution or highly acidic solution is dangerous to handle, gives off fumes, and may eventually cause damage to your pipes. And it tends to offset the balance of the waste stream going out of your house. So if you can avoid using any of these chemicals, we recommend that highly. If you've tried those several methods to unclog your sink, but that stubborn clog just won't let you get past it, it's typically going to be in this area, which is called the P-trap. And in the next video, we'll show you how to easily remove this P-trap so that you can physically go in there and snake it out with more pressure and see what you're working against. Hi, my name is Michael Royal and I'm with Agua Plumini. And we've been partnering up with Habitat for Humanity since 2011 on various projects. Today what I'd like to talk about is a P-trap. A P-trap is generally located underneath your kitchen faucet as well as your lavatory faucets. 
the purpose of the P-trap, it is a liquid seal to keep the gases from the sewer coming up into the atmosphere and you breathing it, which could be harmful. The P-trap itself has mechanical nuts on either side. So we're going to loosen that one up. We're going to loosen this one up up here. You see it starts coming apart and boom. Finish it off with your hands and just take it off. Now you will notice that there is some blue pipe dope around the perimeter of where the plastics meet. And that is pipe dope. And it's put there just as a seal to keep waters from leaking. But it comes with a brush and what I like to do is I like to put a little bit just right right inside the seal of the P-trap itself on either end. Put a nice amount in there. And what this does, it, it prevents it from leaking once you tighten up the nut, the compression nuts back onto the P-trap. So now we're gonna install it by just putting it right back where it goes. We'll start the first nut. Hand tight. And we're going to do the back nut the same way. Hand tied as much as we go. Okay. And then from there, you just grab your channel locks, righty tighty, lefty loosey, and we're just going to tighten it up a little bit there. Now, there, you can't over tighten it. And if you do that, you're going to strip the threads and the nut, and you're going to need a new nut. So, what I always do is Go hand tight, maybe a quarter turn past that, and just start releasing water into the drain and see if it leaks. And if it does, tighten it up a little more. But you don't want to over tighten. Now another thing I'd like to talk about is clogs. Sometimes in these labs, um, just anything that would go down there, maybe some hair, maybe a button, maybe you name it, could go down there and clog it up. So the first place you want to look for clogs is down here at the P-Trap. This P part here of the P trap would be a good place to maybe find some debris that has caused it to clog. Up here we have the actual pop up. This would be the faucet here, uh, the bowl, and you'd have the, the pop up right at the bottom of it. Now, from time to time, things, hair and stuff, could get collected in there as well. In order to take that apart, you have this nut right here. These are all mechanical joints. So, once again, you just got to loosen it up, righty tighty, lefty loosey. Um, I'm doing this one, it's only hand tight, but you may need a channel box. Same, same thing, same purpose, same function. So you find the right setting on your channel locks, and you just take it apart. Now once you take it apart, the nut all the way, back it off all the way, you just simply pull it back. make it a little easier for ourselves. You just pull it back and you just pull the pop-up right out. And you'll find debris and stuff gets caught up in there. Um, and you just clear it out, put it back together again. The way I like to put these back together again is, if you notice, it's got a place for the lever to come in and pin in there. So you could actually do the lifting up and down of, of the pop-up itself. So what you want to do is you want to aim it toward the back. So that way, it's easy to find once you put the lever back in. Once again, mechanical joint. We're just tightening it right back up. Hand tight. And then a quarter turn right at the end with your channel locks. Just to make that seal. And your pop will work no problem. Up and down. The best way to prevent clogs is to prevent anything from entering the drain in the first place. However, despite all your best efforts, eventually something's going to get down there, whether it's hair or grease or even roots into your main sewer line. You can take other options to periodically do maintenance by using natural degreasers and pipe cleaners to keep the system flowing smoothly. To maintain your drains on a regular basis, just use a simple solution of salt and baking soda. And the way to use that is to first boil some water, about a good 16 ounces, pour that down the drain, 
Immediately add salt and baking soda in the proportions we recommend, followed by about a half a cup of vinegar. That chemical reaction will bubble up and scour the sides of the pipes and help strip some of the film and grease that builds up, allowing any wastewater to travel through the pipes very smoothly. We recommend you do this at a minimum of a semi-annual basis, but more preferably if you do it every quarter. A fairly simple do-it-yourself project you can do to improve your shower is to replace it with a newer shower head. There are literally hundreds of options out there ranging from high pressure showers to massaging showers to rainfall patterns. If you're going to do that, you're going to want to wrench some Teflon tape or pipe dope and your faucet. Again, you don't necessarily need to turn off any main feeds to do this. You just turn off the local faucets on the fixture. Rotate the old shower head to the left. Before putting on the new shower head, wrap some tape, Teflon tape around the stem. Put the new shower head righty tighty until you have a little bit of resistance. And then using the wrench, turn no more than a quarter to half turn. You don't want to over tighten it because Many of these fixtures are made with very thin brass or plastic and you will damage it. The Teflon tape is necessary because it forms a seal and prevents any micro leaks coming from the connection between the shower head and the feeder pipe. Your toilet is designed with a reservoir and bath that when you push the, the, the when you flush the toilet and push the handle down, it raises a gate or a flap and the water descends from the tank into the toilet and that pressure forces it through the sewer pipes. The older systems were based on a chain and a rubber flapper so that when you pull down it mechanically lifted the flapper and allowed the water to flow in. Newer systems are complete with floats and cams that automatically raise a gate or lower it depending on the water level. The parts that wear out most often are the rubber flapper that seals the tank in between flushes and the seals around the handle because these are constantly being moved. These are easily replaced. One of the critical things you'll need to remember though when you go to get a replacement is know what brand of toilet you have or if you can take the flapper with you so that it'll be easier to match up in the store. The critical dimension on that flapper is the space between the hinge holes on the back side of the flapper. Switching out a toilet flapper doesn't require any specialized tools and most of them are either snap in, snap out, or require just a simple screwdriver. The next video will show how to change a typical toilet flap in the reservoir part of the toilet. Inside the toilet itself, the tank, you'll find the fill valve, which has the float apparatus attached to it, as well as what most people would call the flapper. But in the man's field, you don't have a flapper, you have a gasket ring that makes that seal. Now, if you ever hear this noise coming from your toilet, that means you have a leak somewhere. And nine out of 10 times, it's gonna be from the gasket at the bottom of the fill tube. So, with that being said, if you need to change that ring out, which you will have to do periodically, what you should do is shut off the angle stop. Once you do that, no more water will, will be released into the tank itself. Then you want to drain down the water that's in the tank simply by flushing. Okay, now that you've emptied the water out of the tank itself, you want to take the fill tube off by just pulling it right out. Then you have this here, and it's got an actual mechanical nut down below it, which you simply righty-tighty, lefty-loosey, and take that 
right off. Once, once you have done so, you've got to finagle this right off the lever, just gently so as not to break anything, as well as lifting, and take that right off. Down here at the bottom, you'll see a red ring, and that ring actually makes the seal so that water isn't continuously draining into your boat. And all you do is reach in there and just pull that ring right off. And here is the ring. You can find this ring at any Menards, Home Depot, Ace Hardware, or plumbing supply store. Uh, you have your model numbers here for your tank, and with that information and it being a Mansfield, you should have no problems getting a replacement. Now, once you've gotten the replacement, you simply just run it back down through the fill tube. There's a two inch diameter ring down there, a plastic ring, and you simply put the gasket around there, making sure that there's no debris or anything around the ring as to keep it from sealing. Next, you wanna make sure you lift your lever up high, and it's all plastic so it bends pretty easily, but be careful not to break it, and just put that right on. Next, you have the nut for the fill tube, which you just want to righty tighty lefty loosey right back on again. Hand tight is good, you don't have to put a wrench on it or anything. These are plastic parts and they break very easily. Fill tube right back in place and you're all set. You come back down to the angle stop and quarter turn right up again with the arrow pointed up. Another do-it-yourself project you may want to consider are putting, is putting in new faucets. However, this can get to be a little complicated as faucets vary from a one pipe feed up to a four pipe feed. And you're going to need to know exactly which feeds go where and you'll need special tools and keep in mind that you're doing this in a cabinet laying on your back, looking up, and working behind the sink most of the time. It gets really tight in there, and you might not be able to reach everything to properly tighten it to form the seal you'll need. This is a good spot to call in a plumber. It's a quick, easy fix, and the cost will not be that high. However, if you do want to do it yourself, we have this quick video to demonstrate the process you would go through to ensure that you remove it and install it properly so that you don't damage anything and you don't make a mistake that will eventually come back in the form of a leak which can cause significant damage down the road. Today what I'd like to talk about is how do you take off and demo your kitchen faucet so you can reinstall a new one. So every kitchen faucet has uh, two angle stops inside the cabinet that are your actual water shutoffs. So in this faucet here you have supply tubes and some nuts and those will go right into your angle stops. So the first thing you want to do is cut off the water. So righty tighty lefty loosey on the angle stops and that'll get your water shut off. You have two supply tubes. One would be connected to your hot, one would be connected to your cold. And they would be connected to your angle stops down below which is your water cut off down inside your kitchen cabinet. From there you just undo the mechanical nuts with a crescent wrench or a pair of channel locks. And once you demo that, you take those apart. Once it's free, both are free, then you gum underneath your kitchen sink. And what you wanna do is you wanna take off the hose, detach it from the faucet before you get going. So this one here has a clip. And if you push the clip in, you could pull it right out. After you do that, you wanna take the clip off the bevel and set it aside. Now the kitchen faucet itself, I'll tilt that so you can get a better view, is held on with a nut. So you reach down from underneath, you could either use a basin wrench or some channel locks. Uh, it's tight down there so you just got to see what you can find to do it with. But 
the right tool would be a basin wrench. And you, you literally righty tighty lefty loosey and undo that knot. And uh, once, once it's free, you could pretty well take it off with your hand. And that, that is all that holds the face plate and faucet to the kitchen sink. Now we still have the sprayer on, and the sprayer is kind of held on the same way as the faucet was with the plastic nut. We have that here. And again, the correct tool to use is a basin wrench, but I find that a lot of times that a large mouth channel locks works out just as well. So we'll just take that nut right through the sprayer hose. Once we do that, the escutcheon plate and the sprayer have come loose. Therefore, we just retract the hose right through the Set that aside. And that is how you demo a kitchen faucet. I have a kitchen faucet here, a new kitchen faucet. It's a Moen Adler, and uh, I'm going to show you how to install it. Out of the box, you'll find you have a sprayer, an escutcheon for a sprayer, the faucet itself, and this faucet comes with supply tubes already attached. So if you buy a kitchen faucet that doesn't have supply tubes attached, then you're going to have to purchase supply tubes. So here we have a kitchen faucet. Now typically, you'd be doing this um, in place because obviously your kitchen sink's already in place on the countertop there, so you'd be doing this from underneath. But today, for convenience reasons, we're going to go ahead and do it above like this. So what you'll do is you'll grab your chrome finish plate, install the supply tubes, and attach it to your kitchen faucet. That sits just like this. Now, an option is you could get plumber's putty, like we have here, plumber's putty, and you could just take this stuff. It's almost like uh, like Play-Doh. And what you would do is you'd uh, you take it and you just apply it to the bottom here, and you can do that all the way around the perimeter. And that's just like an extra seal. But it also comes with a little foam gasket, which is supposed to prevent that water from getting underneath the plate and into your cabinet to cause a lot of harm. So what you do is you just slide them right through the hole there. Now if you notice, the sink itself comes with four holes. But there's only one that's the center. And that's where your spout would go. So we're going to insert that right in there, right as it goes. And next, you have your nut. This one here comes with this inch and a half nut. You just insert that right through your supply tubes, right up to the bottom of your kitchen faucet there. And you would just righty, again, righty tighty, lefty loosey, and just tighten that mechanical nut right up like that. And now you could use a basin wrench underneath your sink, or you could use uh, some short handle, large mouth channel locks. Now, I like to make sure that everything's aligned, so nothing's crooked at the end at the finish. So, you may want to make sure before fully tightening it, you may want to make sure that everything's proportionate from the top, just for a visual. So, then you finish tightening it, and just finish it off with your channel locks. That's pretty tight there. And you want to make sure you get it tight so that you make your seal down below. So you don't get water going, running through there. So next we got a sprayer here. First, before we get on with that, we're going to put the escutcheon on for the sprayer. Now your escutcheon is your finished plate that sits on your kitchen sink itself to give it a nice pretty finish. So that also comes with the mechanical nut. And so all you want to do is just righty tighty, lefty loosey. Just thread that right up. Now once again, putty is an option. I like to put on putty just so that you have a double reassurance that you're not going to get any leaks. And you can put that right underneath the escutcheon, the cover plate, and that'll secure that. Just because you buy a sprayer doesn't necessarily mean that you can go ahead and install it with your faucet. So you got to make sure that you buy the right sprayer for the right faucet. In this case here, Moen's got a special adapter here already, already attached to the hose. There. and you just string it right through the hole okay the way you connect this 
particular sprayer onto your faucet itself is it's got a clip. And you just clip that right into the beveled end there. And you've got a couple of notches in there where it actually goes. And you just push it all the way through until it adjusts and holds. Once it's popped in place, you pull it down and it'll be locked in. And that's how you know it went all the way in. And it's got an O-ring that'll make that seal, so you ain't gotta worry about it. But you do have to make sure it's secure all the way in. What you should know is that you should uh, periodically check your cabinet for any leaks. Um, this is something that would happen inside the cabinet, and unless you look in there periodically, you wouldn't realize that you may be leaking. But it could cause a lot of damage as uh, kitchen cabinets are typically made out of wood and uh, they could rot. So you don't want any mold or anything like that happening. So this is something that I would suggest periodically check for leaks down there. And again, this is how you install a kitchen faucet. When you do do-it-yourself products, you can save a significant amount of money and it can be fun. However, some projects can be much larger in scope than you may be comfortable undertaking. So that's where it's always wise to call in the experts. Installing a new toilet requires a lot of knowledge and a lot of pre-planning, including knowing how far the toilet sits from the wall, what size pipes, what size fittings, how to install a wax seal, how to apply the proper pressure on the seating of the toilet, and then attaching the correct feeds. And one of the reasons we do recommend calling a professional or someone who has advanced knowledge of plumbing to install a new toilet or dishwasher is that if you don't do it 100% correct, even a little drop every few seconds is going to cause major damage in time. And most of those drips are not going to be seen. They're occurring underneath the floor and above the ceiling or in a cabinet out of sight, out of mind. And it will be too late when you finally realize you have a problem and will be found when you experience either mildew, mold, or complete failure of your ceiling or cabinets. If you do spot a stain on the ceiling or the wall and I suspect a hidden leak, the first thing you should do is to shut the water supply system off and drain it through the laundry sink in the basement after you shut the main valves off. This will release the pressure and will stop the water from leaking, causing further damage to your house. And in this regard, it's best to call some professional in because they're going to need to remove a portion of the wall or the ceiling and trace back to where that leak is coming from. This gets into a lot of work and a lot of time, so it's best left to the professionals when you have what we call a hidden leak. As always, if you've undertaken any of these do-it-yourself projects at home, we'd love to hear from you. Please alert us by describing your project and your successes and failures in the comment section. If you click on the link below, you can take a quick quiz, which will put you in line for a $10 gift certificate, which you can use on future do-it-yourself projects.